Antoine Prezard is the definition of a modern setter. Great hands, big blocks, rocket serves, a game changer. It's no exaggeration to say that without his heroics in Berlin, France would not be going to the Tokyo Olympics. But right now, he's back at home in France, so I call to check he's doing okay and how he's passing the time. Antoine, hello, can you hear me? Hello, yeah. Ah, fantastic news. <laughs> uh, so, I'm at home and I'm bored, like everyone in the world right now. So, I'm reaching out and calling cool people, and I'm aiming to spend, spread a little bit of love and positivity, but mainly, I'm calling to see how you're doing. So, where in the world are you, and how are you getting on? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, I'm in France now, close to Bordeaux, uh, to my place. So, yeah, I'm... I'm pretty lucky. Like I'm actually very lucky. <laughs> are you are you at home alone, or have you got somebody no, with you? No, I got my girlfriend with me. Yeah, and you, no, and you guys are getting on okay, right? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Um, it's really, really sunny now. Uh, really warm as well. So yeah, we have a garden. Everything's fine. So yeah, we are pretty lucky. I'm more in holidays than than stuck at home. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Actually, you yeah. mentioned the sun and the good weather. I'm looking at your nose. Have you? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad thing because people who, who knows me like know that I'm pretty white. <laughs> oh, me too, mate. Come yeah, I on. can see that. <laughs> <laughs> so the sun is killing me now, but yeah, it's better like that. See, we need to uh, we need to add that to the list. Stay home. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good time to say that. Yeah. <laughs> so your day to day sounds like it's it's pretty cool at the moment, and life's treating you well. Yeah, um, I get, it's pretty hard to say that now. Um, I'm obviously thinking about people who are struggling much more than me. Mm -hmm. um, I, of course, I would prefer to be still in Poland and and play the big games now, but. Yeah, nobody, nobody expected that. So I'm, I'm, I'm lucky, um, but the situation is, is really bad. What's Poland like then? Because, you know, we can, I'm spending a lot of time at the moment focusing on positives and thinking about really great memories. And you must be making some there because there are a few countries in the world where volleyball is a really special sport and Poland is one of those countries. So what's it like sort of living there and playing there and, and having the fans and, and all of that side of things? Um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a special country for volleyball, of course. Uh, and I think I was also there in a the good moment because yeah. I spent two years, like <laughs> one year and a half, after their second world champions title. So it was something special after that. Uh, even more, I played with Kurek. So like I played with, with the national team players, but yeah. when he came last year, it was something very special. Um, I mean, about the crowd and the fans and stuff, it started to be crazy. Uh, we had a really, really good fans, but after that, like, it started to be crazy with the, even with the, the teams of the, like, pretty low on the ranking and um, the gym was so full and yeah it was it was very nice but even without without him it was great atmospheres of, m almost everywhere and yeah. what are the supporters like with you what do you mean uh, the fans like uh, do they do they make you feel welcome when you play well uh, do they tell you when you play badly do they tell you um not so much when i play bad actually i don't understand polish so okay. maybe <laughs> Um, but I, I didn't know it so no for me it was great like people were so nice with me in, in Warsaw uh, I was also pretty sad to to leave to leave the city like yeah. like I did because because of the of the situation now I wanted something not special but mm -hmm. like to know that I will play my last game there um, so yeah no the fans were were great with me and I think they they appreciate me and I did also so yeah, it was nice. Yeah, pretty amazing play. I, I find that wherever you go with Poland, you mentioned you don't understand Polish, and I don't either, but every time I meet uh, a Polish person or, or go to Poland for, for volleyball, you're just like, oh, dzień dobry, and they're like, hey, dzień dobry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing, amazing people. So uh, time is such a weird thing at the moment, and the start of this year, 
was obviously huge for you on uh, on a personal level with everything that happened in Berlin. I'm going to show you a couple of videos now, and I want you to to let me know like what kind of memories these stir up and how they make you feel. I'm going to press play and just tell me how this makes you feel. What what do you remember from these moments? Yeah, it was something very special. Like I was on a, another planet on this moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I still have good them seeing that, um, but it it would be better with the with your talks, huh? Oh but no, nice. <laughs> this, this isn't about me. <laughs> this one was unbelievable. Oh, yeah, I, I'm. I don't remember even once that I made three aces in a row on my career, and it came on this moment. So, no, really, it's it's something amazing. It's it's very amazing. Like I can't. I don't know. I don't have words to say that. And it was like with with the teammates and stuff like it was an amazing amazing atmosphere um and yeah like i i all of them are are really good friends but i was with uh with uh Luati on the court and yeah. he's like my brother i started to play with him in, in toulouse and yeah we are so so close so to to do that with him it was something even more more special and look, I don't want to put, put words into your mouth because I know as a general rule, as athletes, you're, you're very modest and you realise that even individual achievements are all part of the team and the greater good. But I don't think it would be too much of an exaggeration to say that when you came on the court, that you changed the game. And perhaps without your contribution, then maybe France wouldn't be going to Tokyo in 2021. What do you make of that? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's it's so hard to say that. Uh, for me, it's not like that. Um, I did my job, and I was on on the good day. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, I think also that it it comes obviously from the team. But I mean, not that it's the team job and stuff. Like it is actually. It's not necessary to tell it. Mm -hmm. But I mean that everybody trusted me. And I felt that, and it's it's impossible for the 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 crowd to see it because it's all about practices and stuff. But it started in in 2018, I think, in the World Championships against Brazil. Like I came in, and I think that the the look of the team on me were started to be different. And but you know, I was confident, and as I said, the team trusted me. Mm -hmm. But it's also about Tonyoti that we we helped each other, I think. And yeah, it gave me confidence. It was like we are close also. Um, so he helped me, but way before this game. So it was a surprise for me to play such okay. such a level. But um, it's it's not like random. I mean, it was a good day. Obviously, it's not normal day. <laughs> um, but it's it's not like teamwork on the normal like on the common way i mean it's teamwork started way earlier than that so what about this moment then what are your memories of this that's amazing also yeah <laughs> no it's pretty funny because i like I, we can say that we controlled pretty much this game yeah that's <laughs> that's great memories oh <laughs> yeah still good <laughs> uh yeah and i yeah we were countering the game it was yeah we played really well this game and we knew that germany were really under pressure so like it was it was tight on the third set but we knew that they were so close to be eliminated so they were in big pressure so i told to, i told to to ervin that just put the ball on the court and we will we will do it with the block defense <laughs> and he answered the uh, hey, off i just go full power <laughs> was, mm, okay <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, that's really <laughs> funny. 
<laughs> but he actually didn't go full power. He yeah. just had a good surf with control. But <laughs> yeah, it was, it was funny. Uh, and that release at the end, I mean, he sank to his knees, but the whole team crowded around him. The bench was off. And not everyone in their careers gets to experience those special moments, do they? Because you know they're coming. You win the first set, you win the second set, you know you've got match point. But it just seems like when you achieve it, it's just that release of energy and you all share it. And those are, those are special moments, aren't they? Yeah, uh, that's, that's very true. Very true, sorry. Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing because during all the, the tournaments, like it was very, we were very close. Like all the bench players were so close to the court. We started even with the, when the started, starting six came on the court, like all the bench were, uh, bench players were close to the court. Um, so it was, yeah, it was something special after every point during the semi, semi and, and, the, and the final. Um, it was the same, like, I remember the, the match point uh, in semi-final. Mm-hmm. At all, all the bench just started to be on the, almost on the court, and the point was was not finished. <laughs> and yeah, that 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 was a good good moment as well. But yeah, it, it was it was something special, and everything went very bad before, like mm, yeah. all the months before, and everything was so going so well during this tournament and during this week before. So, yeah. And now. Fingers crossed, you stay fit, you stay healthy, and you'll go into the Olympics in Tokyo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I was saying that on, in January or February, and, and we won't go 2020. So, yeah, <sighs> the road is, is still, still long, but yeah, I hope so. Uh, if it was easy, though, it would be boring, right? Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but going back a couple of minutes, you mentioned Tonyuti there, and you mentioned that you two have got a good relationship and I'm really glad you said that because obviously he's the captain of the team and he's been around for quite a long time and you sometimes wonder whether somebody like you who's a little bit younger and can have such a huge impact on the game that there might be a little bit of of friction between you two but but you two get on well and you both understand your roles in the team. Yeah sure um if yeah I came I came he was like He's still, but he was one of the best player, best setter in the world. Mm-hmm. He's still, so yeah. But and I came as very young. I was just in French league, and yeah. uh, I didn't achieve anything, uh, more or less. Like I played good in French league, but that that's it. And we started to to speak, like to talk, quite often, and and it was it was nice. And then when I signed in Poland, uh, I asked him some advices and stuff like, and yeah, during, during my first season in Poland, I, when I played, I don't know, one or two bad games, he sent me some messages like, yeah, no, really, it's going to be okay. Like, don't, yeah, it, it's normal and stuff. And on my second season, we, we fought for the, for the, the gold medal. So yeah, it started like that. Step by step, I came closer and closer to him. But he, I think he wanted that also, like for the team and stuff. So he always says that we need everybody to to achieve something. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's a good example. And I'm I'm glad that we are qualified. And yeah, that's it. Like I would be. I would be so glad if we would qualify with him on the court. Is the same. You said there though that you see him as one of the best setters in the world. Does that mean you see yourself as one of the best setters in the world? <laughs> That's a bad question. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I was one of the best setters in one of the best uh, league in the world, so I'm not so far to be. Uh, but the difference between the best of the best and like the second level, I mean... <laughs> Uh, it's it's huge. So like I mean about I, I talk about De Checo, Bruno, Christensen, Janelli, they played they always play to win. Mm-hmm. They are always on the teams to win. And that's that's a big difference. So yeah. Well while we're talking about the best, uh, I wanna play a quick game with you and it is called Simply the Best. I'm gonna ask you a question 
and I just want you to answer me with the like the first thing that comes into your head. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I've, just, <laughs> I've just looked at the question that's number one. And after the conversation we've had, there's no way I can open with that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apart from volleyball, what is the best sport? Uh, well, basketball. Who's the best French sports person of all time? Karabatic. Legend. We'll talk about him in a minute. Uh, best moment of your career? Berlin, for sure. The best song to listen to before a game? Uh, Get Down Saturday Night. <laughs> uh, the best atmosphere you've ever experienced? Um, well, in Berlin, finally, it was something. The best food to eat after a game? Indian. I like it. <laughs> The best place in the world that volleyball's taken you? Um, Poland. Like. Who's the best setter in the world? Oh. Um, Bicicle. And uh, what's the best thing about being a professional athlete? Um, to To live like uh, experience that I lived in in Berlin, for example, all all the season long. When yeah, that's amazing. Amazing. Well played. That's the game. <laughs> um, so you say best best French sportsman of all time, Karabatic. Just, just what was your supposedly first question? The the first question was who's the best setter in ah, the okay, world, okay. and I thought we can't just have that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Worse. Who were your sort of sporting heroes growing up, volleyball or, or otherwise? Um, it's, yeah, it's weird because I don't have one okay. player in volleyball. Uh, but for me, Federer is like the goat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I like him so much. And do you, uh, do you play any sports or did you play any sports before volleyball took uh, over? Yeah, I played tennis a little bit. Okay. Um, but yeah, I started really early to play volleyball and I just play beach volleyball when I don't play volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously the Olympics are on the horizon. You, you played in Poland. You've started to taste that sort of Champions League success. You, you won the CEV Cup. With, was it with Paris? It, yeah, I did. Well? I did with, with Paris, but I was second setter. Uh, yeah, but it, it tastes really well. So. Um, what, what ambitions have you got in the sport? Is there any sort of one goal where you think, if I achieve that, then I can retire a happy man? Yeah, uh, but it's, it's so hard. But yeah, it's like a dream to win the Olympics for sure. Like for everyone, it's the same, I think. I think you got a chance. Hey, we are on the tournament, so we have a chance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's talk about the future then. What are you really looking forward to doing as soon as this quarantine is over and we are allowed to get back to normal life? What are you really looking forward to? Um, yeah, I can't wait to see just my family. Um, they were supposed to come in Poland in yeah, at the end of, of March, I think. So they obviously cancelled. So... Now I'm in France, I'm two hours far from them and I can't see them, so that's pretty tough. But uh, yeah, my family, to see my family and my friends in, I got like really good group of friends in Paris. And I, yeah, I miss them as well, so yeah. Paris is such an amazing city. I yeah, mean, yes it oh, is. Yeah, <laughs> there, there, are, there are some places in this world that just feel special every time you go there and Paris is definitely one of those um, is sense. there is there anywhere in the world where you haven't experienced volleyball yet that you really want to um i've never been in canada to play okay uh in, in australia either like i've been but not to play mm -hmm. and i've been in argentina uh but to play with the youth national team okay. and at under 21 no 19 and it was great so i can imagine that for the 
a team it's it's something special as well so yeah maybe in argentina it's nice to know that even though you've you've kind of achieved so much and you're at the top level there's still so much more to so much more world to see so many more players to to play with and play against it's uh, yeah the future's the future's pretty bright uh, who's I the so. yeah yeah me too um are there any teams that you that you really sort of don't look forward to playing either because they're hard to play against or it just feels a little bit different i mean we, we, we always talk about all the good things what about the not so good things i, I didn't understand the question i'm sorry are there any teams where that you don't look forward to playing um or any players that you don't look forward to playing against ah uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i played against leon this season okay um it's not a great memory <laughs> <laughs> no i played three times actually i didn't play even once before that and i played twice with national team in okay. qualification mm-hmm. the first qualification tournament mm-hmm. in gdansk uh he didn't play a great game i think like normal game but they just kill us as, as a team so. <laughs> yeah. and then i yeah like uh, we played against perugia at home in warsaw and he was so motivated i think <laughs> so he just killed us yeah. yeah, he's very good, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's very impressive. Okay. Yeah, he's he's alone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is players like that, but he's even higher. So, do you do you think he's do you think he's the best in the world? Yeah, I think so. That is uh, firm firm praise indeed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right then, I am going to leave you go now. Thank you so much for your time. It you has been done. so good to speak to you, and I'm. Yeah. Most importantly, I'm glad you're doing well and I'm glad you're safe. And hopefully, when this is all over, we'll get to catch up in person at a volleyball yeah, gym it would somewhere. Be nice. Thank you very much. It was really funny. Yeah, good. Look after yourself, mate. We'll speak soon, yeah? You too. Yeah, sure. Take care. Bye bye. Bye. How can you not love Antoine? What a great guy and Sam player as well. If you've not seen those performances from Berlin in January, then get yourself over to the CEV's YouTube page now, the semi-final and the final. Proper game changer. Big blocks to change the momentum or that service run of aces where you really put France in control and of course the great setting as well to all parts of the court, sending them to Tokyo. And I just get the feeling that he's going to do something special in his career, whether it's Champions League, World Championships, Olympics, uh, people are going to be talking about him. He's remarkable. Anyway, uh, enough about my one-man Antoine Prezard fan club. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed talking to him. And if it's the first Unscripted you've watched, then head over to CEV's Instagram and YouTube. You can watch them all. We've got great indoor players, beach players, coaches, something for everybody to get you through this lockdown period. It's not just unscripted, we now have the quizzes that are happening every week, loads of games from internationals and champions leagues that you can watch and James Fielden has been hosting the debate as well. So lots of great content to help you pass the time so we can all get through lockdown together. You know the story by now, stay home, stay safe, take care of yourself and I'll speak to you soon.